Just take a look at this stunningly restored facade. It looks a lot better than our last visit here. Back in 1934, it took nearly 19,000 signatures to make the opening of this place a reality. Fast forward to 1985, and there were probably just as many individuals involved in saving it from the wrecking ball. Thanks to the efforts of those remarkable people, the Pyramid Cinema now proudly holds a grade two listing and boasts this magnificent new facade. Hopefully we can rest assured that this iconic architectural gem in sale is no longer in danger. I'm here with Catherine McGuire, and she is the... General Manager of, of the last James Dean sale. And you had a bit of a part in the restorations to the front of the building? Yes, so what we did was we worked with the landlords to bring up the uh, front of the building to a high spec standard now. So it's all been renovated. Uh, they've done quite a bit of the um, foyer area, and obviously the front to bring it all back up to what is now is beautiful. Oh, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it, it's a real showpiece because this building is is quite the centerpiece of sale here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, it's a big part of Washway Road and obviously the history of it. And um, we've been obviously we're Everlast gyms now. We've got our you know pool, sauna, steam room, and everything in there. It's beautiful, but we still try to keep the sort of the ambiance of the club um, to the fact that you know we still got this big screen. Um, we still kept all the decor and everything, but we've created this fantastic gym. Yeah, the, the interior is fantastic yeah. as well. Catherine, thank you so much for uh, telling us a little bit about it. No problem, thank you. Thank you. Sure. Built during the challenging times of the Great Depression, this magnificent structure stood as a symbol of hope and resilience. It must have instilled a sense of pride and joy within the community. Despite the hardships they faced, the Pyramid Cinema became a beacon of optimism. It offered an escape from the harsh realities of life and brought people together in shared experiences of laughter, tears, and entertainment. Its presence in sale undoubtedly uplifted spirits and fostered a sense of unity among its residents. Let's take a look back at the history of the Pyramid Cinema. If you remember this place as anything other than the crumbling facade that it is today, you probably remember it as the Odeon or the Tatton Cinema. It was a nightclub in the 90s. Now it's Sports Direct round the back. But it first opened its doors as the Pyramid Cinema 88 years ago today. This was in the wake of the First World War and the Great Depression. By the end of 1930, unemployment had more than doubled. Many families had to depend on the dole. But an unusual thing was happening in England in the 30s. Despite the depression, there was a construction boom. Along with the Pyramid Cinema, most of the homes we live in today in Sale were built during this period. Almost three million homes were built in this short period of time due to government aid and subsidies. Perhaps it was a means to combat unemployment and to stimulate the economy. Even before construction began, there was heavy opposition to this new cinema. The Palace, Savoy and Regal Cinemas joined ranks against this new competition. Eventually, a local committee, which included the Vicar of St. Paul's, organized a huge demonstration of about 4,000 people at the pyramid. The protest meeting, along with 19,000 signatures in favor of the new cinema, swayed the local magistrates. It opened to great fanfare February 1934, with a stage show and its first film, My Lips Betray, starring Lillian Harvey and John Bowles. Cinema was the most popular form of entertainment in the 1930s and 40s. It became a place for young people to meet. Children could watch action-packed matinees and adults could briefly escape the reality of the Depression. By the middle of the 1930s, some 18 million people a week went to the cinema in Britain. It was the golden age of Hollywood. But there was also homegrown entertainment. Gracie Fields or Jesse Matthew musicals, the latest George Formby or Jack Hulbert comedy, or you could take in an Alfred Hitchcock thriller or Alexander Korda epic. The pyramid was by far the most elaborate cinema in the area. The facade, although not particularly Egyptian in overall design, has various Egyptian style moldings and fluted pillars. It does have echoes of the Temple of Luxor. Inside, the Egyptian theme was again largely moldings and finishes, 
like Grauman's Egyptian Theater in Hollywood. The building included a first floor cafe advertised as the rendezvous for discerning folk. A large car park provided ample parking spaces for those lucky enough to own a car. And flanking the cinema, two rows of shops were built in a style that harmonized with the nearby post office. It was around this time the newsreel came into its own. The addition of sound brought the events of the day closer to home. And the thing that everybody wanted to know was what that funny looking man in Germany would get up to next. That silly little man in Germany turned out to be quite a nuisance. Christmas 1940, Sale was a casualty of the Manchester or Christmas Blitz, and the pyramid was nearly lost during one of these raids. Incendiary bombs penetrated the roof and caused several fires. There were many other casualties, including the town hall. But thanks to an auxiliary fire service pump, the pyramid was saved. But the Pyramid or the Odeon was not just a place to see movies. There were many plays and variety performances, and the specially designed movable Christie organ console was often a main player at these events. The organ lives on. It was purchased by the Lancastrian Theatre Organ Trust in the early 1980s and installed in the Blue Coat School in Oldham, where it was used for regular concerts until 2008. The organ is now in storage awaiting a new venue for installation. Having a full working stage was a bonus. One pantomime included a full-size coach with real ponies for a production of Cinderella. One amusing story, at least in hindsight, was the great Carmo and his disappearing lion. The poor animal, restricted to the false bottom of its cage, decided to answer nature's call and relieve itself. Arthur Cass, whose normal duties included using a perfume spray along the aisles and passages twice nightly, had to spray the affected areas speedily with a stronger mixture and more generously than usual. If you've ever experienced cat spray, you can probably appreciate what a full-size lion must have contributed to the performance. The pyramid changed hands and became an Odeon cinema in 1942. It continued to be a place where the town could get together and celebrate. It carried on successfully throughout the 1940s but it met challenging times during the 1950s as cinema audiences fell away, mainly due to the strong competition of television. In 1981, the cinema was rebranded the Tatton. This was a short-lived venture due to escalating running costs. For a while, the building was closed, and in July of 1985, a deal was struck with Trafford Borough, who bought the Odeon for 200,000 pounds. The intention was to demolish it for redevelopment. Locals started a campaign to prevent it, and in November 1987, the building was given a Grade 2 listing. Within a short period of time, escalating cost forced the council to put it on the market. Work commenced by the new owners to turn the building into a nightclub known as JFK's and the Liberty Discotheque. Major alterations took place during 2001 when the franchise LA Fitness Center took over the premises. Another change of ownership took place in 2013 when Sports Direct Fitness Club opened. It's seen better days, but at least the building is still in use. It holds a prominent place in sale. Under that peeling paint, there's still a beautiful building. Maybe the renewed interest in the new Stanley Square will spread, and buildings like this will take their proper place in the landscape of sale. Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. I'm just finishing up editing this video and having a brew in my new cup. You can get yourself one. Have a look in the description for a link. I put Washway Road on it because everyone remembers it by a different name. The full ABC minor song is at the end of this video. Now I know that's not the right song for this venue, but it's the right era. I couldn't find a free version of the Odeon song. If you want to help us out with things like that, get yourself a mug so you can have a brew. Now, uh, brew, that's a new word for me. Well, I know the word brew, but in Canada, a brew is a beer. We sometimes call it a brewski. But then again, you don't know what's in this cup, do you? Anyway, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free.
Watch out, Dad. 